All right, everyone, we are continuing um, in our great journey in better understanding the gift of prophecy the Lord gives us in the Old and especially in the New Testament. So we are uh, we've been embarking on this journey. We are on our second um, part of this, and I've really been enjoying my process of study and preparation and learning um, just how much God says about this, this reality that we have uh, in the Holy Spirit. So uh, we are in part two today. As I thought about coming in, um, there is such uh, joy and anticipation on Sundays now, and thank you all for being a great part of that. It's really a lot of fun for me um, to come in and, and do this with you. So let's look at God's Word together. Um, we're going to start here in 1 Corinthians 14. Look at verses 1 through 5 there. Paul writes this for us. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men, people, for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church, builds up, strengthens the church. Paul says, I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. He who prophesies is greater than one who speaks in tongues unless he interprets so that the whole church may be edified. Uh, we're going to look at Acts chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. Now remember, this is Pentecost. The Lord is gone. Jesus is gone to be at the right hand of the Father. And the Holy Spirit enters that room where the disciples were hiding from the authorities. The Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples. They run out into the streets speaking in different languages and people begin hearing the gospel message of Jesus in their own language. Remember this. And they say that the apostles, the disciples must be uh, drunk because there's no way they would know um, the language of each of the people who are, who are in the city. Now I don't know about you. I don't have a whole lot of experience with being drunk. But I, the last time someone spoke in a new language was the first for me. Let's look at God's Word. Now this is once people are saying, you know, what's going on here? This is Acts chapter 2, verse 14. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. The verse it refers to is Joel 2.28. The prophecy in the book of Joel, Joel 2.28. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit. God will pour out his spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. This has already been, we've already been given this truth before it happened. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit on those days and they will prophesy. Okay, so this is a good question. So raise your hand if you're a son or a daughter of God. Okay. So, if that is who you are, then you have been given the Spirit of God in order to... Does that sound crazy? I mean, how many of you have been told that before in the church? I mean, some of us have been going to church for a long time, and we've never heard that truth. Two of you have heard that. That's good. Hold on to that. That's, that's good teaching. You know, we've been in the church for a long time, and a lot of us have never heard that God pours out His Spirit and we're supposed to prophesy. 
Sons and daughters of God is what we are, but even on my servants, he says. Those who are not passionately in love with Christ. We've all been, been called and given the Holy Spirit to prophesy. I was speaking with, um, with our good friend Don Muma yesterday and um, talking about this message for the church. Um, this idea, and we'll talk about this some more, but this idea I think a lot of people have is that, well, if there are prophets or prophecy, it's that guy with the fancy title who you see on TV, you know, who walks around and goes, oh, 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 I've got a word from the Lord. See that? You've seen those guys before? They're kind of fun. Some of them are really kind of fun. But we're told that each of us is to do this as a regular part of Christian life. He was encouraging, by the way, just so you know, which was nice. The fact that it's for every person in the body, every person in the body has been given the spirit and the ability to do this. Let's pray together. Lord God, we um, thank you for this time in your word. <coughs> we ask that your word would speak your truth to us. And Lord, if anywhere in our minds during this message we find ourselves feeling offended, Lord God, let us ask the question of why. We desire in this time, Lord, to know your word and to live it out as you have given it to us. Even if it's something that we have not realized or been taught before. So guide us by your spirit to hear your word, to, to understand your truth, and to see what it means for our lives. We ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, a friend of mine uh, called me this week. Um, uh, his, his wife took their children and left and sent him a text message. I have left with the children. It's a, text message. It's a good friend of mine uh, from seminary. Um, and I didn't realize it at the time, but I went back that night and I was really um, uh, shaken up, I think, by that conversation. Didn't even realize how shaken up I was because he and I, he and I are the same age. We got married about the same time. I stood in his wedding. We have kids that are the same age. You know, and you say, you know, that must be so devastating to have that happen. In your life, he, he didn't have any control, he didn't see it coming, and all of a sudden there it was. And as I, as I think about prophecy, this idea that we hear from God and can share it with each other, we can discern God's voice, we can encourage each other in what God is saying, especially if someone can't hear God for themselves, if they can hear God through a, through a friend. The difference that can make in someone's life, especially in that kind of situation. You know, um, and the fact that we can encourage each other in that way, that we can hear from God and say, here's what I'm hearing from God for you, and that we can share that with each other and encourage each other, and we don't have to have a paid church professional to do that. Um, but this idea that God allows us to hear him for each other and to, and, to, and to encourage each other in that way is, is a powerful, beautiful thing. And I don't know that I've understood it up until now, that reality. Um, so I'm asking the Lord for a clear word for my friend in this time. Um, yeah, so the importance that, that prophecy can have in, in us sharing God's heart, God's vision, God's peace, God's clarity... Uh, for each other is a, is a beautiful thing that, that we've been given here, the Scripture tells us. Um, a reminder from our Scripture again, prophecy is hearing from God and then in love expressing to others what we hear 
for their blessing and encouragement. Okay? That's what this 1 Corinthians uh, 12 passage is all about, or 14 passage, 1 through 5, is all about how we've been given prophecy for the strengthening, encouragement, and comfort of the body. A lot of folks that I meet in the church, have, they can kind of carry this Old Testament prophecy mentality. You know Elijah, who went to the king and he said, King, you're, you're doing everything wrong and God's angry. And people can carry that now. And I'll tell you, we might even see the wrong stuff, but it doesn't build up the church or the individual to blast them with God's angry at you. What does blow up the individual is seeing the gold, is seeing the good that God has for someone, or the good in themselves they have not yet realized. And I believe that New Testament prophecy is for that exact purpose. It's looking at somebody and seeing something, having God show you something they can't yet see for themselves. You see the difference in those two things? It's easy to find the dirt. It's hard to find the gold. But God's heart is the gold in each person, not the dirt. To call forth that good which has not yet been realized. The idea of prophecy also is to help each person come to an encounter of God. You can hear words from someone and, and you can say, oh my gosh, that is the answer to what I've been praying for. You ever have those moments? I'm praying for something and then you, and you find that answer, you, 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 whatever it is, however it comes, you go, oh my gosh, I needed that. You know, because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, we know when a word is correct and when a word is from God and we can say, I needed that, and that does draw us closer to God. One big thing is we always prophesy in love. It might sound silly, but it's actually a really big deal. Nothing worse than someone prophesying to somebody when they're angry. The Lord told me you're wrong. It's not a good use of hearing God's voice. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 2. You know this from every wedding you've ever been to, hopefully. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am only a resounding gog or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, which we all have, according to Acts chapter 2, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. It always comes out of love when we prophesy, when we share God's voice with each other. Okay, there's a difference now. There, the Bible talks about how there's a difference between um, a prophet, like the, the office of a prophet, and people who are, who are moving in the prophetic. Okay, there's two aspects of this. There's moving in the prophetic, and there's the office of the prophet. We see that in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. Let's go there together. It was... So it was, it was um, it was God who gave some to be apostles, okay? Apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. So we see here, um, to, be, to prepare God's people, yeah, that's great, let's, let's stop here. So there's five offices, okay? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Okay, you all say this is interesting. Maybe we haven't done this before. So there's five, there's five offices that we're told in the, in the faith that people can, can hold or have, and normally we'd have them recognized in the church as such. But oftentimes you'll find a pastor who's really more of an evangelist. You ever see that before? Pastor comes in and instead of pastoring the church, he's like, I've got to get out on the streets and lead people to Jesus. You say, but pastor, wait, we've got to have this, this meeting and we've got to do a baptism. Oh, I, I can't do that. I've got to just lead people to Jesus. That, that could be a really good evangelist who's stuck in a pastor's shoes. I see that actually quite a bit. It's helpful when you have more folks on staff so the, so the evangelist can go to the evangelist things and the pastor can be the pastor. But the idea that the church, when it's functioning, maybe at its fullest, would have all five of these things actively engaging. Does that make sense? 
So that, so that all of these different offices coming together in the church allow people to do the, the things that God's put on their heart and their passions. And it's a sustainable model for being effective in a lot of the realms and the areas of the Christian life. I mean, certainly the one pastor, you know, will have a hard time doing the other jobs while he's trying to pastor. Pastor and teachers usually go together, by the way. And, and, but the rest of it is, is, is it's, you see how if all of these offices are functioning in the body, your body is going to have a lot of good things going on. So I see why Paul gives us this model for life in the church. Now, remember again, when he was talking about the church, it wasn't the building, it was the folks that were in community together in the city. But this idea that you'd have people that would be walking in every one of these five offices, these five ministries. Um, so, uh, to prepare God's people, verse 12, for the works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Again, remember, we're, we're told that, that, um, that we're to have life in, you know, the, the John 10, 10, that he comes to give us life in the full. This idea that there's, a, there's, there's, there's having some realization of the life that God's given us, and then there's the fullness of that, which is more expansive. This idea that the, the, the fullness, the, the full picture of what God has called us to would, would, be, would have all five of these ministries coming. And so you see that the office of a prophet is, is given to us as, as an office. So all people are called to prophesy, Acts 2, but not all people are called to be the office of the prophet. Does that make sense? So some folks who move as prophets function in prophetic ministry and lead in the church and speak to, to leaders and, you know, and, and function in the, in the office of the prophet. And it's really more to build others up in prophetic ministry. Does that make sense? Amen. So their job is not to hear from God and blast everybody. Their job is to build up the body in prophetic ministry and in their gifts. that God gives certain people certain giftings to build up the whole group into understanding life in the Spirit. So a good prophet is not out there yelling stuff at people. It's actually, he or she would actually be building up others to walk in prophetic ministry. Okay. I am going to, um, I'm going to close with a story here. Um, And I want to encourage you, if you have any questions about this stuff, to, uh, to talk with me about it. Um, because as we go through the scriptures, some are about the office of a prophet and some are about prophetic ministry itself. So I want us to be able to, to differentiate between the two things. Um, I want to share with you, my closing illustration is a, is, a, is a prophetic word that I got when we were ministering at a homeless shelter um, at Hope of the Valley, our homeless shelter. Um, they had us come in and... and um, I gave a message, and uh, Luke and, and Pina and a few other folks came with us, and um, uh, we were praying for the folks, the homeless uh, people that were staying there for different needs. We were actually, I was actually praying for, um, I was praying for, for back and leg pain for one woman, and um, and I asked God if He had a, a word or a picture for me to give her um, as a way to you know encourage her and build her up. So I was praying for, and, and God gave me um, a picture of a little girl doing, like, the sound of music dance, Julie Andrews, you know the, let's see if I can do it here. She's in the field, and she's like, <laughs> you know. I'm like, okay, you know, so I got this little picture of this, of this, of this girl spinning in this field behind a, a barn, right? And so I just, I said, okay, God, you know, give me, a, give me a picture. And it's, you know, it's kind of a funny thing. We'll talk more about pictures and things. But, so that's the picture that I got for her. I'm like, all right. So, uh, so we finished praying for her, and I said, I said to her, now, okay, we'll talk about prophetic talking to people. Um, I don't think that it's necessarily good to walk up to somebody and say, the Lord gave me a word for you. Hear the voice of God. Because now if that's not a right word, you're setting up damage for God to be saying something that he's not. So we'll talk about that some more, too. Um, but so I, I gave her this, what I, I said, I said, I got a, I got a picture of you, um, 
dancing with your arms out um, behind a barn in a, in a field was the word that I... And I told her that, and she began to cry. Um, and there's a, we have a line of people here that are coming up for prayer. So she's in the line at the, towards the beginning, and she began to cry. I mean, she, you know, there's, 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 there's the soft crying, and then there's the weeping. You know, she began to, to really cry. But she was, you know, we had... Um, um, Blake was leading worship at the time up at the, at the thing, and, and she, was, she just began to cry and worship God. And, and I had a long line, so I couldn't ask her, you know, okay, why are you crying? So we went down the line, and we prayed for the, 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 the long line of folks. And um, at the end, um, I remember the moment, because it was a really powerful moment. I mean, something happened with her. Oh, wow, how did you do that? <laughs> he, went, he went and found that picture during my story. That's fantastic, Joel. So, um, so, so uh, as I was leaving um, Hope of the Valley, the rescue mission, at night, you know, she came up to me and she said, um, I wanted to thank you for, for your word for me. And I said, oh, great, yeah, tell me what it meant. And um, she said, you know, when I was a girl, I grew up um, in Iowa on a farm. No, I didn't know that. I grew up in Iowa on a farm. I was the oldest of, of several kids, and every morning I had to get up before dawn to go out and, and, and do, um, to set up things with the animals for the farm day, and then to get my brothers and sisters ready for school, and I would get them, I would get them ready, I'd get them off on the bus, and then I would have five or ten minutes to myself, and I would go out every day and dance and praise God in back of the barn on our farm. And, um, and she shared that um, now her husband and her uh, were homeless, and so he was staying at one mission, she was staying there. And she said, you know, um, it was confirmed to me that God saw me, that he hadn't forgotten me, you know, that he remembered me, that he wasn't far off, that he knew that he was still there. And I, I thought to myself, wow, I had no idea what Julie Andrews dancing in the back of the barn meant. But God knew. And God spoke to her. And she felt not alone. She even felt loved. You know, and, and we can do a lot of good things in our strength that, that bless a lot of folks, but we can't do that without God. And if that's a gift that he has given to each of us, I would love to see all of us be able to live in that kind of a reality. If we want to. If we want to. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, this morning. Thank you for the gift of prophecy. Thank you that you speak to us for the edification, for the building up of others. That others could know and be reminded of your love and your purpose and your plans for them. Help us to understand what it means, Lord, to listen and to live by faith. to encourage each other. And Lord, even so much more to encounter you in this beautiful way. So Lord, as we go on this journey together of understanding what prophecy is, what it means, why you've given it to us, that as you pour out your Spirit on us, that we we're all called to know this and live in it as a regular part of the Christian life, I pray that this journey would be wildly blessing and fulfilling for us. What a great thing to be the church. To have promises like this that we can incorporate into our lives. Ways that we can know you and love you and share that love 
that goodness, that truth with each other in a way that is very real. In a way that our culture desperately needs. And Lord, frankly, in a way that we need. Holy Spirit, guide us in this journey. With grateful hearts, we thank you this morning. Continue to pray, Lord, have your way in us. Have your way in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Help us spread the message. Click on the donate button below or go to shermanoakspc.org forward slash donate. Thank you.